Hello everyone. Yesterday we discussed about the manufacturing sectors. We discussed about the classification of uh, different types of industries. We discussed about how the different industries they work accordingly, according to their mode of working, according to the type of working, according to who is owning, who is managing, who is doing, who is owing all these assets. Who is managing all these assets? We have done all this. And we were on the topic about, we were discussing about the textile industries yesterday. And textile industries occupies a very unique position in manufacturing uh, uh, sector. And uh, in textile industry, we discuss about cotton. Because cotton textile is very, very important as far as the contribution uh, to the GDP and national income is concerned and as far as the employment is concerned giving employment to millions of people directly and indirectly and also contributing to the uh, income of the country and the gross domestic production of the country about textiles about cotton uh, india is uh, very famous uh, to export its cotton to usa uk russia france and one fourth of the total foreign trade of India account for cotton yarn. India is known for raw cotton and uh, had been the original place of cotton in the world. So we are ahead in the production and in the export of cotton, not only yarn but also the ready-made garments. Earlier, when there was colonial rule, Cotton textile industries were mainly concentrated. They were mainly located. Concentrated means they were at a place. Concentrated in certain pockets of India, like you can say Gujarat, Maharashtra, etc. Only these pockets were, these areas were famous for uh, the production and with the supply of cotton. The reasons were that the whole black soil area, Deccan Plateau, that is having black soil and black soil is best suited for the cotton production so there was proximity of the raw material moreover these areas were technically technologically they were advanced and there were very good there are very good and there were very good port facilities and uh, britishers you know the colonial government they never wanted to invest money in uh, those areas which they didn't require because uh, they, it was very easy for them to uh, send and bring the different raw materials to send cotton textiles to the other countries, to the ports. Ports were there. So these were certain factors. Moreover, it was hot and humid climate. Because of the hot and humid climate, uh, the cotton yarn which is produ produced in these areas, Maharashtra, Gujarat is quite good, is quite durable. So most of the industries were there. But after independence, our government tend to diversify these industries. Diversify, I have told you, setting up industries in different parts of India, setting up industries in different uh, tribal and backward areas, uh, and uh, also setting up industries in different areas to give scope to the local crafts, to give scope to regional crafts, regional art, regional weaving, etc. One more thing important about the textile industry in India is that this industry is complete in its value chain. In its value chain, the industry is totally complete from ginning, spinning, dyeing, uh, embroidering, uh, printing, packaging, everything is done in India. So we are not dependent on any other, we are self-sufficient in this. So it is complete in its value chain also. And when the industries were diversified, uh, local crafts, regional uh, style of weaving, style of printing. For example, in uh, Gujarat, it was tie and dye. In uh, Jammu and Kashmir, it was brocade work. In Banaras, it was brocade work. In Punjab, it was fulkari work. So all these regional crafts, regional embroideries, regional designing came in the cotton textile. So uh, the industries made strides. Before the coming of the Britishers, it was only handloom production. People used to weave khadi and it was very coarse but it was very famous outside. It was in great demand outside India. But when Britishers came to India, they set up power looms, they set up different types of industries. 
today about 80% of the cotton textile industries are working in the private sector and only 20 are working in the public sector and giving employment to millions of people directly and indirectly more than 35 million people directly they are involved in the industrial work and indirectly bringing raw material taking uh, materials to the market and uh, uh, working on the ports etc however uh, the industry suffers with certain challenges because in every industry when we will discuss this chapter uh, different types of industries we will also discuss the challenges faced by the industries because secondary sector is also suffering with so many problems so there are certain problems of the tex cotton textile industry the so first and the foremost problem is uh, synthetic fiber because synthetic fiber is uh, cheaper durable so people tend to buy synthetic instead of cotton so the demand is a bit declining second thing is we have very outdated very old machinery that we are using we have not upgraded although in certain areas it has been upgraded but we cannot say thoroughly it has been upgraded thoroughly it has to be upgraded the machinery the technology we have to uh, adopt the new technologies we have to upgrade the machinery so as to come at par with the other european countries with the other competitors moreover there is very erratic power supply at many places because of the erratic power supply industries cannot work they cannot be set up everywhere correct so and moreover the uh, the best quality yarn yarn is the thread cotton thread that is produced in india that is exported because there is a great demand of indian yarn outside so it is exported to different european countries and uh, arab countries why because it is of a very good quality uh, so when our uh, cotton textile uh, uh, workers when our cotton industries when they receive orders from uh, the other countries from abroad they have to import costly yarn this is a mismatch in the industry this is a mismatch and actually this is uh, uh, we, it, it is uh, a misery that we have to export uh, good quality yarn to earn foreign exchange we, because india is a developing country and we we need foreign exchange to import so many things so this is a mismatch for the industry however uh, after independence and particularly after globalization after 1991 the industries they are working well and they are making strides in this field and our cotton gar cotton garments cotton textiles they are very famous outside correct what we are doing we are discussing agro based industries and the first industry that we discussed was cotton second we will discuss about the jute industry india stands second in the production of raw jute after bangladesh which was a part of india previously so bangladesh is number one and india stands second most of the jute industries are located near the Hooghly river this is a long answer that you get in your board examination that why most of the jute mills are located near the Hooghly river the factors responsible are uh, proximity to the raw materials because uh, bengal is a very enhanced it is a very important area for the production of jute because i told you jute is grown in the renewed soil and Hooghly river is always flooded so renewed soil is there and on the renewed soil everywhere jute is grown so because of the proximity of the raw material transportation cost is reduced the second factor is inexpensive water inexpensive water supply water not only for uh, transporting the jute goods but also for the processing of jute because lots of water is needed for the processing of jute Thirdly, there is good network of railways, roadways and waterways. Correct? So, these facilities are there. Good network of railway, roadways, etc. Then, lots of cheap labor is available from, not only from Bengal, but also from the adjoining areas of Odisha, Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. Lots of cheap labor to work directly and indirectly in the jute industry it is available over there and kolkata an urban center it provides them the facility of banking insurance etc consultants etc amusement places and kolkata also serves as a very good port 
so even the port facilities they are available to the jute uh, textile industrial workers and jute textile industries so that is these were the factors that why most of the jute mills have been set up near the hogli river there is another thing uh, that uh, jute uh, india exports to many countries like uh, uh, arab countries united kingdom usa etc but it also faces certain challenges the first challenge will be the same as we have discussed in cotton use of synthetic because previously all the jute packaging materials were there because synthetic fiber is quite cheaper and durable so people have stopped using jute and they have started using synthetic then bangladesh brazil Phil, uh, philippines egypt thailand they are making they are producing very good quality of jute so we have a stiff competition with them although india exports jute and gunny bags jute artifacts and raw jute to usa canada russia united arab republic uh, uk australia etc but even then we are facing problems and when we say that jute is considered to be the golden fiber because giving employment to so many people if its demand reduces what will happen to this employment so this is a matter of concern so uh, recently the government has made the national jute policy it was made in 2005 national jute policy and according to this again there is an opportunity for the jute growers again there is an opportunity for the jute textile industries when people are, people have been uh, awakened and awareness have been brought among them to use maximum jute and to give up the use of synthetic why because jute is a biodegradable material and it is good for health and it is eco friendly so again an opportunity have been uh, created and because of the national jute policy of india and uh, because most of the jute textile industries were concentrated near the hogli river now they have been diversified and because they have been diversified it has brought lots of improvement in the jute production in the next lecture we will discuss about the further agro based industries in which we will discuss about sugar industries till then prepare your notes make points of all these things as i have told you pick out one mark question from it we will meet again in the next lecture that is goodbye from me